하지만은 Watch a little TV. Just woke up. Took a shower. Dude, what are you doing? Why are you watching TV? We got so much work to do, bro. You're wasting time. Bro, what are you watching TV for? I thought you were trying to make it. What's this about you wanting to give your grandparents the best time of their life before they're gone? You're always saying these things. Man, what are you talking about watching TV? Get your ass up. Hmm. No, get your ass up, bro. There's work to be done. What you doing? We got all this shit that's got to get, get done, bro. I mean, you're just sitting down and watching TV, like, relaxing. Like, you do that shit, like, five minutes every day. You relaxed enough. Get going. Come on. Come on, you ain't got time for that. Your anxiety, your crippling anxiety and fear of not doing enough should be eating you up. What do you think, you deserve five minutes? Nah, fuck that, let's go. Hey man, think about all the work you've done already. It's all right to take a few minutes, chill out, relax, you know? You're only young once. Take that five, ten minutes, bro. I know, guys. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. What? Shut the fuck up, bro. We haven't made it yet. <laughs> that was a little snippet of what the ADHD can brain can be like. Just an overall, or just an endless amount of impending doom feeling like you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing at all times, procrastinating, doing what you know you should be doing, all swell not knowing what you want to do with your life. And then this will go on loops. And so we create chaos to make ourselves interested enough in doing certain tasks. For example, whenever I had homework that I was supposed to be doing in school or whatever, I did everything last minute because the impending doom of getting it done, that happened to get it done so soon, made me able to focus on getting it done as fast as possible. I was actually able to listen, to focus on what I was trying to do to get it done. But until then, if I had ample time, I just couldn't get it done because I couldn't find the, uh, I couldn't focus. But and it's not like I didn't try. You try to do it and then you just get distracted. And the littlest thing can distract you. You also tend to listen to the same song on repeat over and over and over again. Milking every last bit of dopamine you can out of that song until you are sick of it. And it could be anywhere between 10 plays to 100 times. You're constantly battling internal battles between yourself and it's not like schizophrenia. It's just multiple thoughts allowing you or not allowing you to live in the moment, to get caught up in what you're doing wrong and how you should always be doing more. We have a joke with me and my buddy. We always say, if it doesn't make me money, then I know all about it. And basically that's to say, I will randomly tell him things that I learned through the day because I only care about the things that I'm interested in. And if you're interested in something, I usually tend to get really in, hyper interested in something. And then I learn as much as I can about that thing, just to the point to where like I have a broad understanding, but I'm not a master. I'm not like proficient in it, but I know more than the average person, like a substantial amount more. And then I just go on to the next thing because I milked out most of the dopamine that I could from that new thing. And then the difficulty outweighed the amount of dopamine that I was getting the stimulation I was getting from learning that thing. So then I go to the next thing. And so I have a broad understanding of a lot of things, but I'm not a master at one thing. Maybe the closest I could say that I was a master to something is probably fitness and nutrition because I put years and years into that. 
but like motorcycles i love them and that's one of the things that's kind of getting me towards the the fitness nutrition level of mastery but things like video editing or uh rant, like learning about cars or something like that i would get hyper fixated on them learn the broad understanding of that thing just to the point where i knew more than the average person maybe a little bit more than that and then i would start to dwindle my actual interest in that thing until eventually go on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing all swell accumulatively having these these conversations within my head of saying that i'm not doing what i'm supposed to be doing not accomplishing what i'm supposed to be accomplishing and this can be difficult for most people it's difficult for me because when you wake up in the morning the first thing you think about is the impending doom of not being where you want to be in life whether that financially romantically spiritually however you want to say it physically mentally you're not where you want to be and the impending doom makes you motivated to do something but then you don't know what you specifically should be doing all well not having the or the the ease that a normal person would have to do tasks that you're not interested in it's just a little quick funny thing that i thought up of to make like uh introducing you bring you into my my mind for a second and then showing you what might be going on in my brain whilst i'm simply just doing something as simple as sitting down watching tv really quick which i tend to try not to do i try not to watch too much tv or or indulge in consuming because because it is also difficult to stop and i'm not using adhd as a cop out either there's it's just you rely more on impulses you're very impulsive you have like a high impulsivity it's where if you start scrolling on like social media or shorts you'll see it and then you'll scroll to the next one and the next one and the dopamine is just enough to kind of like block out that mental chatter just long enough to go to the next video and the next video and you can get caught up in like a 15 minute to an hour loop of doing that so i try to stay away from content and consuming stuff like that because it's very difficult for me to stop and it's not even an intentional thing because afterwards once i realize that i did what i did i feel slightly ashamed or disappointed and then i get anxiety or anxious and then like it's just like a, a, a vicious cycle of you know feeling like you're not doing what you're supposed to do mixed in with being told like intrinsically in your brain you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing and then finding something that gives you enough dopamine to find interest but then realizing that that thing that you're interested in is not going to benefit you towards your goals and so you just do this vicious cycle to where eventually you, know, you kind of can snap out of it and start working and everybody's different this is just my personal experience and what I've dealt with or what I've at least come to be aware of because that's another thing is if you lack self-awareness sometimes you're hyper aware of everyone else and their opinions about you and and you're pretty good at social cues and and understanding and reading the room and seeing how certain people react to other people and uh stuff like that but you're not very in tune with the effort that you yourself put in if it's enough or not enough because you're either all or nothing the biggest thing that i can say about myself is i'm all or nothing i'm all in i'm all in fitness i'm grinding i'm doing everything perfectly i'm eating this 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 and this i will not falter from this oh shit! i just ate that cheeseburger fuck it diet's over let me go undo all the progress that i just did it's the same way I am with everything. I'm gonna run every single day, two miles, okay? Run every day, get to the sixth day, run two miles. Seventh day, didn't run the two miles, fuck. Everything's to shit. Might as well go back to doing what I was doing before because clearly the six days of running two miles didn't do anything for me. It's very difficult to be mediocre with ADHD. It's all or nothing. It is, I'm going to give it everything that I have, eat, breathe, sleep, shit this, or I'm not even gonna try. So 
So that was just a little step into my brain. First things first, when I wake up in the morning, depending on what time it is, sets the precedent for how I'm going to be that day. If I woke up later than I wanted to wake up, in my mind, the day is shot. Even though if I woke up later, I'm probably going to be up later. So I te technically, I still have the same amount of awake hours to do the things I need to do. But my brain doesn't think that way. They just think, oh, fuck, I didn't get up at 9 or 10 o'clock. I got up at 11. Day is ruined. I also noticed if I get up and I immediately go through my notifications on my phone, and if I... I don't even see notifications on like my Facebook or, or Instagram, but if there's like a little like a red like a red red number by like how many notifications you have, it bugs me, and so I clear the notification. And if I clear the notification and I see something that catches my eye right off the rip in the morning, you can end up being in your bed for 15 minutes to an hour, doom scrolling because somehow you got manipulated into doing into looking into that. So what I try to do first thing in the morning is. First, I just look at my bank account because money financially is my main importance to me right now. So first thing I do is look, look at my bank account and I look at my stock account and my 401k account and I look at those and I look at the date and then I see what's coming out, what's what, what bills are coming out soon, what, what income is coming in, when I'm gonna get paid, that type of stuff. Then, I immediately make myself get up and shower, right? And if I am in a point where I'm taking medication, I usually would do this. I would take my medication right as I'm waking up to go shower, right? Right now I'm not. So I would go take the shower, and then after that, I would immediately get some sort of caffeine in me, whether it's a Jet Alert, an energy drink, coffee, whatever. And then I usually try to make myself sit down at my desk on my computer. When I turn my computer on, mentally I have it in my brain that my computer means working. I don't play video games on my computer. The only bad thing that I could say that I do is YouTube on my computer, but I use YouTube to upload content on my computer, right? So when my computer's turned on in my brain, that turns into work mode. Sometimes I'll even turn my PC on right before I shower so that when I come in the room, all the RGB lights are on and, and you know I know, okay, my computer's on. I I'm sitting down, if I'm sitting down at my computer, I'm working. That gets my brain into this type of work mode. Then I usually pull up Google Docs and I kind of look at all the notes that I've created. And usually I have like a tab like video, YouTube video ideas. And then I go through and see the things that I made, things that I didn't make. And then whatever piques my interest immediately, that's the thing that I do for that YouTube video idea. If the one that catches my attention immediately, I know that that's the one that I'm interested in right at the moment, that means I'm gonna do the best work on that video, then I immediately click, I immediately go into a new doc and I title it from that YouTube video idea that I that I was looking at my notes. And then I just start typing out, I type out a script. But the reason why I type out a script is so that I articulate the ideas and thoughts that I have in a way to where the viewer can understand them so that I don't get tripped up or caught up on what I'm saying. And then I usually don't even use a script, but because I physically wrote it down, it somehow articulates in my brain the order that I'm gonna say things in. It helps me organize my thoughts a little bit. And then sometimes if I'm just doing a voiceover video, I'll use that script and I'll read it out, but it's my own words. It's my own words that I wrote in a way to where it's, on, it's genuinely me and I'm just saying it to the audience so that it is articulated in a way to where it makes sense so that things aren't jumbled around and bounced around the way my brain w works certain things because ADHD brain tends to make everything connect one thing that you're talking about reminds you of something else that might not even have anything to do with that topic but somehow it reminded you of something else which then makes you go to that different thing that you were then you start talking about that which then reminds you that you didn't even finish your point about the first thing you were talking about, which makes you go back to that to finish that point. And then the person that's listening, she's like, okay, I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about anymore, dude. And so, yeah, I understand the struggle if you have it. It is not a cop out, however, it's a superpower. It means you have endless energy to work towards something if you find it interesting. And you can hack your brain to make things interesting if you just try a little. And I know it's, it's easy to say, and I understand that like, we get labeled 
as if we are just lazy and we don't try. But it's completely the opposite. We are hyper focused. We're geniuses on things that we care about. But if we don't care about it, it's hard to make us like try to do it because your mind just bounces from one thing to the next. And then you, it's like, re, like someone with dyslexia reading a paragraph over and over and over again. And it just doesn't make sense. And then you have to reread it and reread it and reread it and reread it. Because the same with ADHD, you're reading something and reading something and reading something. And you forgot that you were reading. You were actually reading. You read the words on the page. But your brain was thinking of something else whilst you were reading the words. And so the whole time you were having a dialogue or a narration in your head whilst reading the book, then you didn't even understand, you didn't articulate anything that you read. So you have to go back and read that paragraph with the intent and focus to understand what you just read. You're not alone. I understand. It's tough. It's difficult. But we have the superpower of endless energy on things that we care about, on solving problems because our brain is always trying to solve a problem. If you like this kind of video, guys, please leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, share it to anybody that you might think has it. This is not diagnosed. This is not a diagnosis. I'm not a doctor. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm only talking about my personal experiences because I was diagnosed. I was diagnosed late in life. So I lived 25 years of my life pre-diagnosed with no medication and got diagnosed later on because I always knew that I had it because it runs in my family, but it did not allow that to deter me from trying in life in general. Is a diagnosis isn't a life sentence, right? You don't, it doesn't, it, it's not who you are. It's not, you're, you're not, I am ADHD. That's not, it's not your identity. It's just something that your brain is just a little bit different than someone else's. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. W out.